All right, all right. This is activist Lee Gee. It's been a while since I did a Scream Yard podcast um, taping. Yeah, like I said, this is brought to you by Scream Yard. Thank you so much to the platform Scream Yard for, uh, excuse me, making it possible to share information with the people. Um, okay, okay. I want y'all to bear with me. Give me a little time. We're going to get into everything. All right, all right. Let me come back to it. Okay, so like I said, it's been a while since I made a, a recording. Um, I've been working on a lot in the last, it's probably been about two years now, and I've been working on a lot in these last two years. Uh, people in my circle who know me and even the people that's on my social media uh, may see me posting a lot of different um, events and different information about legislation and political uh, laws and uh, government. That's a big part of what I do as a volunteer activist uh, is share knowledge and uh, encourage us as we the people, which we the people mean the American citizens, it's our job to be educated on the laws. That's why they say uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You know, just because we don't know something doesn't mean that uh, we will get a, a, a pass. You know, if we don't know a law, we don't know a legislation and it's used against us, then it's up to us to take that um, initiative to educate ourselves. You know, it's, it's, it's rarely an excuse, you know, unless you have a mental illness or some kind of um, physical illness that, you know, won't allow uh, us to learn, then, you know, we can use that for an excuse. But other than that, if you have sound uh, body and mind, and, and I know most of us, we have issues. I have my own personal mental issues and different things I deal with, but not to the extent to where I can't learn, where I can't read. You know, because if you can pick up a phone and read, uh, get on social media and, and read garbage and then make posts and comment on garbage then you can do the same when it comes to education. Something, you know, that benefits you and your loved ones. So if we can come on in and talk about garbage, and myself included, you know, I come on social media, I love it. I, I'm going to tell you something. Social media is really my platform for um, activism. That's my platform for action. My Facebook page, you rarely see me put personal stuff on my Facebook. It's mostly about uh, activism, about uh, politics, about community uh, issues and problems and solutions. But something else you'll see me put up there is is comedy, you know, because social media is just entertaining. I, mean, I love it. I love to be entertained. I like the, uh, the clips from good TV shows and movies and, you know, things of that nature. And uh, even the controversy, you know, we, we can all say that we mind our business or whatever, but, you know, we love that controversy, that Cat Williams, the uh, new Monique interview with uh, Club, on Club Shay Shay. We love it. Just being honest, you know, but at the same time, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, but we 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 human, you know, we like to be entertained. But at the same in the same token as we love to be entertained, you know, it's a place and a time for everything. It's a, place and the time that we have to, you know, research the things that um, are more important to me in a time. For as uh, public safety, for as health care, for as um, economics, you know, policies, uh, political policies, we need to know these things. And that's why, you know, I dedicate um, a portion of my time, uh, actually a large portion of my time to sharing that information because it's so important. You know, a lot of people, um, or most people, you know, we train to just get money and, you know, and go get material things, to have a, a keep up an image. 
You know, I'm 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 gonna go to where I'm gonna get this money. I'm gonna get paid. I'm gonna buy this uh, nice house. I'm gonna buy this nice car. I need expensive clothes. And that's as far you know for a majority of us is our knowledge and our mentality go. But it's so much more out there that you know we miss out on that hurts us as a community as a people. You know that we don't pay attention to until we in the thick of it when we have problems with a uh, crime or something, you know, like somebody get killed and you see everybody then want to gravitate to uh, activism and uh, public outcry, you know, oh, it was an unjust murder and this and that, you know, and, 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 and when people like myself and, and many others who do advocacy, uh, they're advocates and activists who say, hey, we need to um, change the public safety in our neighborhoods. And when we do a, 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 a outcry, we reach out to the people doing outreach and say, hey, let's get together and let's go to City Hall or let's go to the state capitol and let's uh, call our uh, elected officials and make sure that legislation is passed and not just passed, but enforced to make sure that we have the proper uh, public safety in our neighborhood. You can't get people to join in. But as soon as, you know, their family member get killed, uh, their loved one, then now, you know, it's a march, it's a rally, it's an outcry. You know, and, and, and hey, it's the reality. Of, I'm not judging anyone. I'm just stating the facts. You know, in the same token when somebody died, you know, now everybody, you know, wish they would have had life insurance. Uh, when somebody gets sick, everybody wish they, you know, had health care. But all the time when... The person making money or your little one making money and things uh wasn't you know at that 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 dire need point it's like you know no one's thinking about that it's like well we'll cross that bridge when we get there so that's a big part of what i do um my thing is to make sure that when you are uh, any person from the public or you know my neighbors get into a situation to uh, have to cross that bridge to make sure that it's resources there. And 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 they get hard, you know, because so many people um, have these issues and problems. It's just, you know, regular problems. But we have elected officials on both sides, you know, Republican and Democrat, who have, we, we, with our tax dollars, we put the funding in for these things to be handled for when we need um, financial help, when we need uh, outreach, community outreach uh, help on certain situations or problems we have, we put this, we have the funding for it. And if, if we look at it, we, we see that the money has been put in these certain departments or given to these certain departments to help us. But when we go look for the fund, they say, well, there is no more fund. You know, well, hey, we, uh, we, we, we helped everybody we could with it. And we got to wait till the next funding period and we have no way of seeing how many people they done help you know because all we see is people who need help we don't see no itemized list of hey we help uh this amount of people you know this did this number uh, uh and negative names which it should be public you know but they claim that it's uh, uh it should be you know private to protect the person and not put you in that person being but that's something that should be public knowledge so we can keep track of all our elected officials using our tax dollars efficiently. You know, that that's that's my thing. That's something I'm fighting on. Um the name of this podcast, I, I really didn't want to put a name on it, but uh just so happened when I clicked back into Screamyard after so long, it had a name I read and it was a, a call to action. So I'm going to go with a call to action because that's always needed, you know. So we need people to come out. We need people to. Um, and I don't like to say volunteer. When you're doing community work, I don't look at. A person doing community work as volunteer. When I, I'm going to say it like this, I see it as an investment. You know, because you it, it, it takes a village. It takes a village. That's a that's a real saying that I have seen time after time uh, being true to say it takes a village. Now, what I do, I say volunteer activists 
because of to the extent that I go. Now, if I was just doing regular day to day, like uh, going to to help out at the school or, you know, going to City Hall or whatever, I wouldn't call that volunteer. That's not volunteer. That's just something that an average citizen is supposed to do. But on my end, when I go in and, and help people uh, with legislation, uh, political knowledge, legislation knowledge, um, what else? Uh, going against um, um, the actions of, of elected officials to say, hey, point of order. You know, point of order is saying that, hey, uh, this is not how this works. You know, point of order come from Robert's rules of order. It's just a it's a way of saying, hey, this is not how this system works. You you you're out of order. You know that that's not how the legislation works. That's just like we got the cop city issue in Atlanta. The way that the mayor and the city council member and the city attorney is handling that is out of order. That's a, a dictatorship. We're in a democracy. You know, if majority says yes, then that's how the city council members and the uh, mayor is supposed to go. You know, they 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 don't have the option to say, well, we're going to listen to the Atlanta residents and then we're going to go and uh, decide if we're going to follow the majority of the feelings of the majority of the uh, Atlanta residents or are we going to make our own decision based on how we personally feel. That's not how the uh, Georgia Constitution has set the laws for elected officials in Georgia. The Georgia Constitution, which is the overall law in Georgia, that overrides every law in Georgia from every city and every county in Georgia, states that an elected official is a representative of their constituents. Constituents mean the residents that's in their area. You know, you have city council members who have districts. So if a city council member is in a district and a uh, vote comes up on a legislation, on a, a law, then their job is to go to their constituents, which again are the residents in their district, the Atlanta residents. They have to take a poll, a vote. This is what they're supposed to do by the duties. This is the law. They're supposed to take a vote. And that vote is determined by the majority, the way the majority rules. So if 51%, 51% or more of, of their constituents in their district say, just for example, we want cop city, then they are to vote yes. And vice versa, if they say we don't want cop city, they are to vote no. There should not even be a reason for a referendum right now. It shouldn't even be no reason that that someone had to go down to the municipal clerk's office and file a referendum. That's that's just it, it, it don't make no sense because if 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 it was done by the book, if it was done by the Georgia Constitution laws, if the process was done by the Georgia Constitution laws, it would be no need for no um referendum. I mean, you know, the only way it, it would be a need for a referendum if it was done by the duties is if we the residents felt like the process was unfair. You know, if we conflicted, if we said, well, uh, the constituents out of, it's, it's 12 districts. If the constituents out of six districts felt yes and six felt no, and then we said, well, let's do a referendum just to be sure on the safe side. That's the only reason we should have did, uh, should have needed to do a file for a referendum. Outside of that, we, we shouldn't even be in no state to where we are questioning um, if the signatures for for the referendum should be admitted. But I mean, it 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 is sick, you know, especially for me being a person who know how the laws work and what the the duties of elected officials are. You know, you looking at it like, man, these folks are really running a dictatorship. You know, this this. There's some real um, third world country type government crap, you know, going on in the city of Atlanta. And people don't really, I don't think, understand how serious it is. 
they they know it's not right. You know, like majority of the Atlanta residents know it's not right, so they coming to speak out. But for me, you knowing political laws, I'm like, man, speaking out. You talking to a brick wall. And I say that respectfully uh, to the Atlanta resident, because I respect anyone who, you know, take time out to make their voice heard. But on the other end, dealing with the uh, Atlanta city council members and the Atlanta mayor. I mean, you, you, you have all these people coming up, all these residents coming up, speaking against something or speaking for something. And. You don't have the common courtesy to give them a call back, you know, throughout the week after they have voiced their opinion. I mean, if I'm a a council member of a district and I have my residents that's in my area in my district signed up to speak, I'm going to have my staff or myself, if I have time to call them back on their issue. You know, if it's housing or whatever, I'm going to have my staff to call them back and say, hey, this is what we're doing. Uh, in lieu of housing, uh, in response to your public comment. This is what we're doing. Public safety, hey, this is what we're doing on public safety. We're working with APD, we're working with different organizations, and we're um, tackling the issue that you came down and spoke on that public comment. The city council don't even have that common curse to say that because no one holds the city council accountable legally. I recently um, got into a situation to where I came across some knowledge that said that every elected official in America is supposed to have a surety bond. Now, a surety bond is just like a regular bond if you're a contractor. So if you're a painter and you want to uh, have a painter's license, you have to have a surety bond. You have to have a bond. Have to be licensed and bonded just in case you make a mistake or error. The customers got to know that you are insured that it can be covered. Even if you try to act a fool and say, well, you know, you ain't got the money, at least they know it's an insurance company that's going to cover their costs. It's the same with politicians. Every elected official, they're supposed to have a surety bond. And their surety bond is based on the duties of the seat, what they're supposed to do for the people that they serve. So if a elected official doesn't do their job according to the duties, the residents or the constituents of their district of their area has the right to go file a complaint with their surety bond company and for financial compensation. They, uh, you can be financially compensated because they have a bond and the bond, the bond usually go for like $50,000, $50,000 to $100,000. So if you have a situation, let's say you told your city council member that um, in some potholes in your neighborhood, some real bad potholes on your street, and you run over this pothole every day, back and forth, going to work, coming from work, going out to get some groceries, coming back from getting groceries. And this pothole over, you know, a time period, tear up your car. You have the right to go down to City Hall and file something called an anti litem That's a claim form. So what you do, you go and you get your car fixed. You get an estimate. You can get an estimate. The best way to do it is get an estimate and pay it. Go ahead and get it fixed. Take that receipt down to City Hall to uh, constituent services and ask them for a claim form. If you can't remember the word anti litem ask for a claim form. And you get them that receipt, you put the amount on there, you turn that claim form back in, and they are to contact you and reimburse you for any damages. If you have been reporting that um, the street uh, pothole needs to be filled. Now, also on top of that, once you do the antelitum, if it's still not filled and you have sent in um have proof like emails. The best way is always when you talk to a city council member, any elected official, do it through email so you have a paper trail. You take that email, and if you make more than one email about that pothole and they don't do anything about it, then you can go to their surety bond. And they are, uh, you, you can ask that elected official for their surety bond information. And by law, Georgia law, they're supposed to let you know who their surety bond company is with. 
and you call that surety bond company and you show them the evidence of where you've been, you know, asking your uh, elect official to do their job and they haven't done it, then they're going to file a claim. That's it. You don't have to do nothing. You have to get no lawyer. You don't have to do nothing else. And they're going to let you know, hey, we're going to investigate it. And once they investigate it, they're going to make a decision. And if, if the city council member or any elected official get too many um, claims against them and they lose their claims where they go over the bond, go over their bond fee, which is 50000 to to 100000 they have a leave office. That's too many complaints. They have to leave office. That's that's one of the, the clauses in that. So this is, you know, it's a lot of things that, that we don't know. This is why activism is so important. Real activism, not the, just the marching and, and, and making a whole lot of noise and, and, you know, having all the rallies and the means. And I'm not calling nobody out or disrespecting anyone. But what's more important than all of that is, is the knowledge. You got to have knowledge. So you as an individual will know how to proceed in situations politically because politics run every aspect of our life. Everything that we deal with, it, 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 the root cause is politics. It's just America. We're in a capitalist society and, and politics and capitalism go hand in hand. So we must have a, a well-rounded understanding of uh, politics. And that's why we also need uh, governing bodies. In, in Georgia, and really in America, we are the only racial group, we as black people in America. And I know my Moorish brothers, y'all have a problem with the word, uh, the term black. Yeah, I know y'all like to, you know, for us to be referred to as black, but, you know, bear with me on this instance, because um, we're talking to the majority in general. But we as black people in America, uh, we don't have a governing body. Every other racial group, have a governing body. Even white people, if you if you go to Buckhead, they have a governing body that's called the Buckhead Council. It's a legal, uh, independent government. If you go to City Hall, they have a, a department called the Atlanta Sister Cities. And it's nothing but foreign uh, governing bodies, independent governing bodies that sit there and make deals with the city of Atlanta and with the state of Georgia on behalf of the people that's in their racial group, their nationality. So we are the only people that don't have that as black people. We don't we don't have a governing body. So we tend to trust in uh, political parties and uh, black uh, elected officials. That's that's what we we forced to do. So and the majority, as you know, we, we get with these political parties, Democrat, Republican and, you know, the seven other ones. And, and we, you know, put our faith in that. And we see time after time, and it, it, we in, we get in a uh, worse situation every year. It's like it's getting worse for us as black people because we need a governing body uh, in America, in in all the states. We need governing bodies that take care of our needs. You know, that can sit down with our government while majority go to work. Because mo being honest, most people don't have time to go down to city hall and be at all the meetings and. Uh, go down to the state capitol. Like now we got the Georgia Assembly going on. We don't have the time to be sitting down now out of education, a political education, to sit at, at at the Georgia Assembly meetings and try to, you know, uh cipher through all the legislation and laws that need that we need to pass or don't pass to benefit us. So we need a governing body. We have to have that. We have to have that. I uh thank y'all so much for listening. Uh, we got a lot coming up. <sighs> I'm going to try to do these um, podcasts or whatever on a regular basis. Uh, I have guests. I have um, more people. So you ain't just got to listen to my crazy voice. But um, again, thank you so much. And uh, let's keep moving forward. The movement don't stop. All right.